Hi, I'm Rich Lund, and uh, and I'm on a herp quest. And I have with me. Normally, I'm trying to uh, go out into the woods, out into nature, to find the herps. But this time, uh, apparently, we have our first fan. He heard about the herp quests, and he came to me. Found this small tree frog on the screen outside last night. We had a little sleepover. What we have here is either an eastern. What we have here is either an eastern gray tree frog, Hyla versicolor, or Cope's gray tree frog, Hyla chrysoscelis. Chrysoscelis, chrysoscelis. I'm not good with Latin. And I say either because there's no visual way to tell the difference between these two that can be reliable in the field. The two species are virtually identical. On average, Cope's gray tree frog has smoother skin than the eastern gray tree frog, but the thing is there's variability within both species. So if you find one with rougher, wartier skin, it may just be a rougher, wartier Cope's gray tree frog, and compared to a smoother skinned eastern gray tree frog, you might misidentify. Even if you got two right up next to each other, you're still not gonna be able to tell just from looking at them which one's which. In fact, until the 1960s, we didn't even know that there were two different species. It was only through the advent of genetic testing that we were able to figure it out. The eastern gray tree frog is actually a genetic tetraploid, whereas Cope's gray tree frog is a genetic diploid. Now I don't know how much you know about genetics, and I don't have the time to walk you all the way through what that exactly means, but just understand, their genetics are incredibly different. They are, most definitely, two different species. Wily ones at that. There is really but one way in the field that you'd be able to tell the difference from them, and that is due to the male's chorus. While the two mating calls are similar compared to other frogs, there are definitely differences between the two. Here, take a listen. And so because I didn't hear this one calling, and in fact I don't even know if it's a male or a female, I really don't have a way of telling you which one this is. Something that you can trust though is if you're in Michigan and you find a tree frog, it's one of the two. These are the only two tree frogs that we have here in Michigan. And one of the things that makes a tree frog distinctively a tree frog is that it can climb just about anywhere. And that's because of the mucous membranes that are on the finger pads on the tips of their fingers. They produce a mucus which gives them more surface tension, the ability to cling on to almost any surface. These guys though aren't just in Michigan, you can find them in other states as well where there are other tree frogs. But one way that you can tell that you have either an eastern or a Cope's gray tree frog is due to the markings and the coloration. They can be anywhere from gray, just like the name implies, to a light green like this one's exhibiting now. Also some shades of tan and brown are there, and they can really go anywhere in between because this species, like some other species out there, can do some very interesting color changes. It's not necessarily that it's a decision that the tree frog makes, but scientists seem to think that it's more about the humidity and the temperature that they're at. That's what causes... So understand, we aren't saying that there's just some different colors that they can be. We're saying that the same individual frog can change these colors. It takes about an hour. This one, though, has been light green since I've encountered him or her. As far as markings go, and again, there's some variability here too, usually at the back of the eye, leading down towards the front leg, there's a, a darker black marking or stripe. Furthermore, on the inner thighs of the hind legs, there's some very distinct yellow markings, and it contrasts very well with the white underside belly. These yellow markings might be to warn predators about the nauseous chemicals that they do produce, and I've had some first-hand experience with them. One time, I found one of these tree frogs, either Copes or Eastern, at a uh, rest stop in Michigan, and I, for whatever reason, when I was driving, leaving from there, I rubbed my eyes, and I had to pull over and just wait for it to pass. I was tearing up something mad. These guys do have some poison associated with them. So if you do ever handle them, I really, so I do recommend, if you ever handle one, make sure to wash your hands thoroughly afterwards. As far as their conservation status, these guys are pretty common. Eastern gray tree frog being more common than Cope's gray tree frog, but still, they're pretty widespread. 
However, their numbers have been declining due to the, uh, the draining of ponds that they use for breeding. If you have ponds nearby that, you know, because of development, they get rid of, they dry them up, drain them, build houses there, then this guy's got no place to lay the eggs. And really the population can be decimated pretty quickly in those certain areas. All right, well, this has been a, a pretty fun, lucky find, but I can tell from his behavior, he kind of wants nothing to do with me at this point. Probably never did. And so we're going to go ahead and let him go uh, in some place nice, dark, and moist. Some place you'll feel comfortable. All right, thanks for checking out this episode. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see some future herpetological updates. I'm Rich Lund. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.